Today we'll be demonstrating the Dwelling Fire programs on the Aegis General Portal. To begin, you'll start by accessing the Quotes tab in the upper left-hand corner. Once in the tab, you will fill in the zip code of the desired location. And based on the zip code that was entered, the system will pull back any available line of business in that area. Today I'm going to be showing a Dwelling Basic or a DP1 quote. The effective date and expiration date will be pre-filled. If you choose to change those, you could simply select the box and then pick the date, or you can simply manually type them in and it would also change. You do have the ability to quote up to 60 days in the future if you wanted to do something a little farther out. From here, we'll select New Quote. This page, all of the required information is designated by a red line in front of the box. You'll fill in all the required information and select continue. Please note that when you're filling in the required information and selecting the term, the three month and six month term will only be available on the vacant properties and you will receive a message that pops up on the screen that reminds you of that. Once you begin to type the address in in the mailing address portion, the address verification tool will pop up. Please note that if this pops up, you will want to use the address that's in here as this will help to diminish any returned mail and also give you the best valuation for the home. You'll select use this address and continue. You'll now select the property address. You can simply type in the address, or if it's the same as the previous address that you've completed, you can check the box for same as the mailing address. You'll select your occupancy type next. And you'll notice down at the bottom, the address verification tool did pop up one more time. You'll select use this address, and you can continue through. The system is going to bring you to our 360 valuation software screen next. The primary information box is already open. You can go in here and manipulate any of the qualities of the home that you may need to. It will pre-fill based on the information that it already has. But again, you might need to go in and check to verify that everything is correct. You'll note on the side here that if you need to add or update or change uh, information regarding a certain feature, this is where you would do that. Once you have the specifications as what they need to be, you'll then select Calculate. The system will pull back the results for that valuation. It will give you the estimated replacement cost as well as the actual cash value. Once those values have been determined, you can select done here, return to quote. The dwelling attribute screen has already selected the actual cash value from the valuation report and it's placed it in the required field. Our system does give you the ability to increase or decrease that amount. So I'm going to make it a nice even number and then verify that all my other fields are correct. I do have some required fields that need filled in, so I'll go ahead and complete those and continue through. Unit eligibility will be next. You'll answer the unit eligibility questions and continue past those. And then you'll complete the discounts and surcharges. Next, you'll select your coverages levels. You'll see that a lot of them are pre-filled. You'll just want to verify that they are correct or change them. The report ordering disclosure screen is next. This must be read verbatim to the insured. Just lets them know the reports that are pulled in order to determine the correct premium. You'll check the box saying that you've read the statement and continue past that. At this point, the system has generated a premium for you. If you look down below, the system will show you the coverages that were selected. At this point, you can review the bill options. You'll select the current bill options as well as the bill options at renewal.
And at this point, we're going to take this the whole way into the application and bind it into a policy. Once in the application stage, you simply just need to verify information or add additional information. We've already completed the required fields, so that's where the verification portion will come in. There is one field on the screen that does need to be completed. The system will give you an error message, and that is the home phone or cell phone. A phone number needs to be placed in there, and it doesn't matter which one it is. Once that's been completed and all the information has been verified, you can continue through. As you can see, the system has bypassed several screens that information is not needed or needs to be verified, takes you directly to the unit eligibility screen. This screen houses all of the underwriting questions. You can see that the two that you've previously answered are still marked. You do need to go down through and answer the remainder of the questions. Once all of the questions are answered, you can select continue. I did get an error message that popped up and I wanted to show you the reason for that. Um, I've selected um, yes to a question that says that the unit is not eligible based on the way that an underwriting question was answered. And the reason that I point this out is just to show you that our system will notify you right away if that unit is ineligible. The other thing that our system will allow you to do is it does allow you to go back in and change the response so you can continue through. You do not need to start the quote over and you do not need to wait until the end of the quote to find out if it is ineligible or eligible. Our system will notify you immediately. Next you'll verify that the discounts and surcharges are correct and continue through. Then again, you'll go ahead and verify the coverages to ensure they are what you are looking for. One thing to point out before we select continue on this screen, as soon as we do select that continue, we're going to move from the coverage section to the loss history section. So as soon as continue is selected, the clue report will be ran on this home. If there is a loss history, it would identify it on this screen. This does not show a loss history, so we can continue through. If you have interested parties that you wanted to add, you could do so at this time. You will have the ability at a later time to add them on there if you choose to do that. At this point, you can select Finish. You'll notice that the report ordering disclosure does come up one more time. You've already read it, so you can bypass it by selecting continue. The system does generate the most accurate premium for you at this point. It has taken into account any loss history and discounts that may be available. At this point, you can continue in to bind this to a policy by selecting continue. You'll verify the bill options. and the system will ask for a payment. You can do three ways of payments, credit or debit card, checking um, or savings account, or agency sweep if your agency is set up for that. I am going to do a credit card payment. My credit card information is completed, so I'll select save payment method, and then I'll select pay now. The system will process the payment and notify you when that is complete. The system completed processing that payment. I can select OK, and it'll take me directly in to the policy information. Congratulations, at this point you have officially bound the DP1 or Dwelling Basic policy. You can see the policy number is listed at the top. You have two options, continue to documents or return to menu. I always suggest that you do continue to documents. This will take you directly into the policy where you can get any required signatures that are needed. All of the documents listed here are available immediately, so we'll look for our application. We'll click on the hyperlink. This will generate the application that you can get the required signatures on. If your agency is equipped to do e-signature or DocuSign, you do have the ability to do that. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can certainly have the insured sign the application. You do not need to send that into Aegis. We just ask that you keep it in your office for audit and compliance purposes. 
Another document I'd like to point out is the deck page. Please note that it is not just the deck page, it is the entire policy jacket. You are not required to print that out for the insured. Aegis takes care of the mailing for that. At this point, we'll go ahead and close out of the policy and the quote. We'll go back to the home screen and we'll locate that policy in our new policies within the last 30 days widget, which is right at the top. And that concludes the demonstration for our dwelling fire programs. Thank you very much.